Hawkins fired up a quick shot early, and there's a beautiful finger roll for a 4-2 Braves advantage. You know, Cliff got out there a little quicker that time, but he didn't get the help from the other part of the defense and left the basket wide open for uh, Hershey to get a wide open layup. Hershey Hawkins was excited about this ball game last year, even though Bradley beat the Redbirds three times. He did not play that well. The Redbirds controlled him. Here's Tony Hallfield with a miss. Cliff with a rebound, and he's job on the offensive board. Tony gets his own rebound, and then in that case right there, Cliff comes up with an offensive rebound. You'll see here on the replay, Tony going up strong. Trempy doing a good job of defending against that without coming up with the foul, but Cliff comes up with the loose ball and ends up at the free throw line. Cliff having a good year at the free throw line. 73% coming in. He misses that one. 18.30 on the clock. Well, Illinois State hasn't been shooting well from the free throw line all year. Bradley, 18 and a half minutes to play. This is Manuel. Starting tonight, Paul Wilson on the bench. You see what Illinois State right did there is very, very important. Hawkins was making his one-on-one -on -one move, and it's very difficult to stop him one-on-one, -on -one, but they got help from some other players and came up with knocking the ball away. So far, we've seen Percy Hawkins shoot a jump shot and drive to the hoop twice. Braves are working it to their leading score. Well, Hershey showing his versatility there by going inside and out. Good defense by Jeff Harris. Starts against Manuel. The Redbirds playing their patented man-to-man -man defense. We're going to see tonight a variety of people on Hawkins. There's a four shot by Greg Jones and a rebound by Derek Sanders. This is Todd Stark. Braves playing man-to-man -man defense as well. You know, Bradley has the athletic ability to be a very good defensive team that possesses great quickness and also great strength. And a bad shot by Cliff Peterson. A nice rebound by Tony Hollifield. He fights for the loose ball. Derek Sanders goes up. Hawkins gets the rebound. 17.30 on the clock. There's the lob pass. And Illinois State comes up with the loose ball. Big 
boy that will not hesitate to drive to the hoop, as you saw there, as he made Jeff Harris part of the floor. Greg hits one out of two, and Bradley now leads seven to two, 16.50 on the clock. There you saw Bradley put some pressure on their 2-2-1 press. The ball's out of bounds before Todd Starks threw it off Hawkins' leg, and Bradley will take control. Well, Illinois State hasn't given the fans much to cheer about from a scoring standpoint, only scoring two points, but some of the calls that they've been receiving certainly have given the fans something to holler about. The Braves looking good here in the first few minutes of the ball game. Hersey Hawkins looking for another shot. Pass inside to Greg Jones, who makes a nice spinning move, but cannot get the shot to fall. These are the Redbirds. Todd Starks leaving the charge. Bradley playing some tough man-to-man -man defense of their own. Something Illinois State can't afford to do is stand around too much against this defense. They've got to get involved in some good screening and open up the inside. Ball well, foul on Trimpey reaching in. No basket. That's Trevor's second personal foul. It seems that Bradley might be content to stay behind in the post. As you see Jackson right there, a little bit behind on the post on Hollifield, and then Trempe picks up the foul, reaching in. The Redbirds are so dominant inside, that will be a telltale sign tonight to see if Luke Jackson and Greg Jones can handle the inside play of Derek Sanders and Tony Hollifield. So far, so good for the Bradley Braves. There's a three-pointer by Jeff Harris. One out of two now, it's 7-5. Bradley plays for his pace of the price for going to that 2-3 zone on the out-of-bounds play. And Jeff found the opening on the perimeter. Harris coming off a 25-point showing against Creighton. There's a miss by Jackson. Rebound by Todd Starks, and we have a foul. Luke Jackson's first foul. Well, it's his first foul, but I think that was a good shot by Jackson. I think even though it fell a bit short, he was very strong in the post and was looking to score. And if you're doing what you want your post player to do is to do exactly that. He missed the shot, and then he went after the post. Good aggressive play by the freshman Jackson. Bradley leads 7-5, 15-30 on the clock. Drove inside out to a wide open foot. Peterson who hands the wide open jumper. And it's a tie ball game. The Braves down quickly. And a foul on Flip Peterson. Hawkins was out of control. Well, that's something that from a defensive standpoint you don't want to do. If you recognize the player's a bit out of control, you don't want to help bail them out by committing the foul. Flip that time not getting over and getting stationary. Hawkins did a good job of drawing the foul and drawing it in the shooting motion to get to the line to shoot two free throws. Hersey will shoot two. He, of course, leading the Valley in scoring with a 26-point average. He's an 81% free throw shooter. Good form, and Bradley leads 8-7. to seven. So far in this game, Bradley has spent a lot more time at the line than Illinois State. You've got to keep, from Illinois State's perspective, the opposition off the line. Nice offensive rebound by Greg Jones. Trevor Trimpey passes up the three-pointer. There's Jones with a jumper. And Greg Jones shows a nice touch. And it's a 10-7 Bradley advantage, 15 minutes on the clock. Bradley coming out of that trapping zone. And Todd Starks throws up a bad shot. And a foul on Derek Sanders down low. I think that was uh, an excellent call by the official that time. Came out from underneath the basket to catch Derek going over the back, as we're going to hopefully see right here. Nice shot by Todd, showing some good, smooth move. But Derek right there, reaching over the back. And they lead 10-7. Any surprises so far, Mark? Well, first of all, I think the big surprise is that uh, Illinois State hasn't been able to score as much as they'd like the inside. It seems the last few possessions they've been going to the perimeter a bit more. And Illinois State's going to have to get inside also to stop that transition of Bradley. But that's not a surprise to anybody, the way that Bradley's been running throughout the course of the entire year. This is Anthony Manuel at the point. He drew the start tonight for Stan All Back inside to Luke Jackson. He puts up a pretty jump shot, and it's a five-point Bradley lead, 14.30 on the clock. Jackson got 
got up very high in that jump shot. He has such long arms. He was good to basket. Beautiful volume pass from Peterson to Todd Stark. Oh, hardly time to blink an eye. Bradley comes back on the transition to take a 14 to 9 lead. That's some pretty basketball. That's some very pretty basketball. And you know, Illinois State really wasn't slow getting back as soon as the ball went in. They did hurry and get back. Bradley, with that quickness, just beat him down the floor. this year. He's a big man with a nice shooting touch and he's a good passer. Hollifield on the drive and he was fouled out front by Greg Jones. It's not too often that you'll see a big player from Illinois State drive the ball from that far out on the floor. But I think Tony sensed a little disadvantage there. Maybe Tony thought he had a little bit more quickness than Jones and took it at the basket. There you see a good picture of Greg Jones for Bradley. It's a four-point Bradley lead, 16-12. 12-20 to play. Derek gets blocked inside. Cliff Peterson with a beautiful offensive rebound and the goal 10 by Luke Jackson. It's a two-point game. Uh, Illinois State again coming up with an offensive rebound. I really think that, it, you know, with, with 10 minutes almost to go in the half, that's what's keeping them in the ball game right now is those second shots. Bruce Mordini is about to check in for Bradley. Blocking foul on Trevor Trippi, his third. You know, Trippi does an excellent job of getting Hersey Hawkins open. You'll see that he does what a screener needs to do, is he'll go and find the player that is guarding Hawkins. He just won't set a screen on anybody, or even sometimes on his own men, you'll see players do that. He goes and finds the player, and that time, unfortunately for Bradley, he was caught moving a bit on the screen. Mordini checks in for Trevor Trimpey, who has three personal fouls. Mordini now playing after that hurt knee, and he picks up a quick foul. Mordini goes after Cliff Peterson. Well, Mordini did a good job of recovering to the plate. A little uh, lapse in the defense there. I'm not sure Mordini knew who he was supposed to have. Cliff had the open jump shot, but instead of going straight up to block the shot, Mordini's momentum took him into the shooter. Thus, he committed the foul. Bruce is an aggressive player, 6'8", 215 pounds, and he does not hesitate to go after people and bang some heads. Well, Here's, oh, excuse me, Doug. That's the kind of player, though, you want to bring in off the bench. He's going to make something happen for Bradley. Cliff misses the first one. Looking now to make it a 16-15 game, and he does. 11.50 on the clock. Illinois State now has the bonus. The Redbirds will be in the bonus on the next foul. Right now, you see a little mismatch right there. Harris guarding Mordini. Certainly a size advantage to Mordini. There's Anthony Manuel with a quick move inside, and they call the walk on Anthony Manuel. 
agree with the call, but he's doing exactly what Stan Albeck wants him to do, and that's take the ball at the defense and create for some other players. The pass to Cliff Peterson, who is open, passes up the jump shot. Cliff not known for his outside long-range jumpers, that is. This is Todd Starks, tapped away by Manuel Jackson. Throws one out to the point man. Good hustle by Starks. Anthony Manuel comes up with it. A wild one right now. Hawkins from three-point land, no good. Jackson with a strong move inside, and he was fouled by Todd Starks. What Jackson did right there, I was really impressed. On a rebound like that, it was it was very difficult to tell how the ball was coming off. And he timed his jump perfectly and out-jumped a bunch of Illinois State players. We'll see the shot here. Todd a little slow in getting back to Hawkins. Wide open jump shot. And you'll see how after the shot hits the rim that it's going to stay up there for a while. Jackson stayed down and timed it right and came down in the middle of players to come up with the rebound. Without question, that's a key tonight. If Luke Jackson can be a force and contain Derek Sanders and Tony Hollifield, the Braves are going to stay in this one. Luke hits the first of two foul shots. Ricky Jackson has checked in for the Redbirds. He replaces Todd Starks. Jackson, a freshman. Jackson, one out of two. It's a 17-15 Bradley lead and a foul called on Jackson. Well, Bradley picked up a foul right there, but their defense tonight has been very effective because what they've been doing is they've been slapping at the ball. That time Jackson comes up with a foul, but if you go back to the other end on Stark's drive, that's how they get the turnover, just slapping at the ball, trying to make some things happen defensively. Ricky Jackson at the line. The Redbirds will be shooting a one-and-one. One. Luke Jackson now has two fouls tonight. Jackson misses. Hollifield with the offensive rebound. And Tony with a beautiful move, and it's a tie ball game, 10.50 on the clock. Tony is really good inside like that. If you saw, he went at the basket. Many players will fall away on a shot like that, but Tony took it right at the defense. Jackson covering Anthony Manuel, who's playing a good point guard tonight. He's lost a lot of weight. I'm sure you've heard about that story. Playing much better these days. Hawkins with a miss. Sanders with a rebound. Ricky Jackson missed down the court. Jeff Harris was standing wide open down here. But then again, Ricky has to play under control and not really force some things. Tony Hollifield couldn't hold on to it, and he winds up fouling Luke Jackson, who picked up the loose ball. Well, that's not what you want to do in a situation like that. Pass may have been a little bit hard, but it's certainly catchable. Tony trying to get away with a little pickpocketing right there, and he gets nabbed for the foul. That's Tony's second personal foul. The Braves are now in the bonus just like the Redbirds. 10-20 on the clock. It's a tie ball game. Well, Jackson hasn't been shooting well from the line overall, only 48%. But in the Valley, he was before tonight's game 5 of 6. So certainly once the Valley started, his free throw statistics have certainly been on the rise. Ever since Donald Powell went out with a broken wrist, Jackson has been the man in the middle. He's taken his lumps, but... Uh, He's learning quite a bit, playing a lot of minutes for Stan Albeck. One out of two once again for Luke Jackson, just like last time. Bradley leads by one. Cliff Peterson, a wide open jump shot, misses, and there's Jackson with another rebound. Cliff comes up with a loose ball. Cliff very wisely brings it out. Really didn't see the advantage and took his time. Hollifield inside, and a foul. I think they caught Bruce Mordini inside. Well, Tony certainly has been active inside for Illinois State, getting himself open, getting himself in positions to score. Okay, that was on Luke Jackson, and he, he now has three personal fouls, and that sends Tony Hollifield to the line, and we talked about that. If Jackson got in foul trouble, that would hurt Bradley. Jerry Thomas now checks in for Luke Jackson. I think that'll help Illinois State right there. Jackson's been a ton inside on both ends of the floor for Bradley. Right now, you see Tony Hollifield at the line. Tony not shooting real well from the line, only 40% overall. And in the Valley, Tony has only shot 2 of 13 for a lowly 15%. Tony has missed 10 foul shots in a row. Make it 11. Tony just cannot shoot the free one with nobody in his face. It's something, it's a mental game. In practices, Illinois State spends a lot of time on free throws. It's obvious when they're not shooting well that that's what they're going to do. But Tony just hasn't come around. 
There's Hollifield now 0 for his last 12, and a foul on Cliff Peterson. A lot of fouls being called right now. The Braves have two men on the bench, Trevor Trimpey and Luke Jackson, with three fouls apiece. Well, that's Cliff second, and Illinois State certainly doesn't want their big people inside ending up on the bench for the rest of the first half right there. I think the officials are doing a good job of trying to keep this game under control, and with the way the elbows are flying a bit early, uh, you're certainly going to have to do that. Excellent free throw shooter Bruce Mordini. It's a 19-17 Bradley lead, 9.55 to play. You can see just a bit of what... Uh, Mordini is going up against her at the fans, waving their arms. Mordini doing a good job of concentrating and getting the ball in the bucket. We have a TV timeout now. Bradley with a three-point lead here at the Horton Fieldhouse. 9.55 on the clock, and we'll be right back. Mark Ward, and Mark, I think the referees have taken control of this in the last few minutes. A lot of whistles being blown. Well, they've certainly had to, I think, but now the key will be is which team adapts better to the close, to the close calling by the officials. Will, you know, will they adjust their games appropriately to come out on top? Bradley's lineup has been shuffled around. Anthony Manuel, Hersey Hawkins, Greg Jones, Jerry Thomas, and Bruce Mordini. This is Harris from three-point range. No good on that one. And Bruce Mordini comes up with a loose ball. For Illinois State, it's Tony Hollifield, Derek Sanders, Ricky Jackson, Jeff Harris, and Cliff Peterson. has gone the whole way for Stan Albeck and Mordini, an excellent shooter shoots just inside the three point line, it's a five point Bradley lead, 9.15 on the clock. Good quick shot that time by Mordini, Illinois State's certainly going to have to adjust and get out on Mordini There's Harris with a wide open jumper, misses that one, Greg Jones with a rebound you see Cliff Peterson on Manuel. Illinois State does some switching, and you'll find some mismatches like that. Anthony Manuel doing a good job running the show, and there's Mordini inside. Misses that one. Well, Bradley took advantage that time. Peterson on Manuel, and then uh, Harris was on Mordini, and Mordini had good position, and he got the nice inside jump shot. Illinois State, though, couldn't come up with a defensive rebound. Some changes now for Illinois State. Todd Starks comes back in for Ricky Jackson. Matt Taphorn makes his first appearance of the ballgame. He replaces Cliff Peterson. Again, taking a long time to get the ball inbound. Both teams playing a tough man-to-man -man defense. There's Mordini with a miss. Jerry Thomas called over the top of Derek Sanders. Well, Derek that time had good defensive rebounding position. And you'll see here, really looking inside to go inside here. Mordini, nice, strong post move. Matt doing a good job of not committing a foul. But Thomas right there giving Derek a little shove before he went up, and the officials caught it. That's the first foul on Jerry Thomas. The Redbirds in the bonus, both teams in the bonus right now, looking to cut into that five-point lead, and they do. Derek Sanders, a good foul shooter. Well, he's been one of the, the more consistent free throw shooters for Illinois State, who have really struggled at the line. Derek coming into tonight's game, shooting 72% from the free throw line. Derek is the leading scorer and rebounder for the Redbirds. 17 points, eight rebounds. He's two out of two. It's 22-19 Bradley, 8.30 on the clock. Mordini inside and the foul on Tony Hollowfield. What you have to look there from an official standpoint is did Tony get underneath Mordini? Right here you see Mordini go up and could Mordini come straight down? And again, it's one of those calls. Illinois State though, good job of coming over and defending against that because once again a mismatch inside. You had a guard, Todd Stark, guarding somebody with the height of Mordini. Mordini shooting the one and one. He was two for two his last time, now three for three, and Mordini is impressing me. He's come in and done a good job. Well, he came in against uh, UAB on Saturday and made some things happen for the Braves, and he's doing the same thing tonight. Mordini, just like a machine. Now four out of four from the foul line. It's 24-19 Bradley, 8-20 on the clock. Illinois State doing a good job of being patient with this press. Hollisfield, wide open, and it's a three-point game. takes the wide open shot 
play, and that was a two-point shot. It looked like he might have been right behind the line. Apparently his foot was on the line, and once again, Bradley leads by five. Well, Jeff is really in a bind there. You've got to play off him a bit because of his driving ability, but Manuel that time showing that he's an effective perimeter shooter as well. That was the first two points of the game for Anthony Manuel. This is Hershey and Todd Starks. They had a couple of good battles last season, doing it again tonight. Inside, Tony Hollifield scores. No bucket. They're going to call the foul on Mordini before Hollifield went up. Well, I think Bradley uh, will be happy with that because Tony had a wide open shot inside where he shoots very well. And you'll see here Matt getting the ball on top. First look you see right there inside. That's exactly what Matt needs to do in that situation. Spots Tony underneath and Mordini with a little push. Okay, Tony 0 for his last 12. Now 0 for 13. Having his troubles from the free throw line. It's still a five point Bradley lead, 7.30 to play. Gary Thomas with a beautiful move. It's a seven point Bradley lead and the crowd has been taken out of this one. And that's certainly something Bradley was looking to do early on here in the game is try to get Illinois State's crowd out of the, out of the picture. Stan Albeck has been very low key on the bench tonight. And so far, the Braves have not given him anything to get mad about. And Bradley will take control. The ball goes out of bounds. But again, Illinois State doing a good job on the board. Derek just couldn't come up with the ball on that sequence, but he actually was in the best position to come down with that rebound. Bradley's going to have to do, if they want to maintain this lead or increase the lead, do a little bit better job on the uh, defensive rebounding. Gerard Coleman, the freshman, checks in for Derek Sanders. Derek, 0 for 5 tonight, not having a good game whatsoever. Credit the Bradley defense. This is Hawkins being pounded by Todd Starks. And Anthony with a nifty move. And Tony Hollifield comes up with a rebound. And another whistle, this time the foul on Anthony Manuel, I do believe. Here we'll get a chance to see the shot. Matt just putting enough pressure on to throw Hawkins shot off a bit. Tony coming down with the ball and Manuel. Not, I don't think that got anywhere close to drawing blood out there, but, but I guess he did hit Tony's arm. Yes, the Zebras have been busy tonight. 6.40 on the clock and Tony, what can you say? Just cannot sink one from the foul line. Oh, for his last 14. And another whistle, this time a blocking foul inside. Who are they going to call it on? That's, uh, that's going to be on Jones with the same type of foul Trumpy got a little bit earlier. Jones that time went after Todd Starks, who was guarding Hawkins, and moved a little bit. Hawkins did a good job of getting himself open because even without that screen, I think Hawkins would have gotten a nice 15-foot jump shot. Well, a game like this is really tough for a player to get involved in as far as tempo because there's constant whistles and every time they go to the foul line. And really that should help Illinois State because it, it slows down the game. Starks misses another foul shot. Boy, the Redbirds having their troubles there. Bradley leads 28-21, 6.20 on the clock. Well, with all the missed free throws that Illinois State has had tonight, it's really good that you can look up at the scoreboard and see they're only down by seven points. Once again, the Braves have not won a road game this season. And this would be a tough place for them to do it, but so far they're looking pretty good in a hostile environment here in Normal, Illinois. Matt Tapworn on the break. Matt goes inside. Gerard Coleman with a good offensive rebound. No good. And Braves take control. Manuel running the show. Bomb some three-point range. Anthony Manuel has lit it up here. It's a 10-point Bradley lead, six minutes on the clock. Bob Donawald calls timeout. So far, a crowd of 7,700 are sitting here somewhat stunned. They've had a lot of inside shots, Mark, and a lot of foul shots that they just have not been able to put down, and Bradley is taking advantage, and the Braves are looking good sitting on a 10-point lead now. The Braves are looking good because they have taken advantage of those miscues by Illinois State. On the other hand, Illinois State does, in a sense, have to be pleased because they're getting the shots that they want. They're getting Bradley to commit fouls. They're just not coming through on the play, something that they're going to have to do in the second half and throughout the remainder of this first half. 
The Redbirds shooting only 33% here in the first half so far. They're down by 10, 5.40 on the clock. The Braves playing that tough man-to-man -to -man defense. This is Taphorn looking for Tony Hollifield and Derek Sanders inside. Derek is checked back in for Gerard Coleman. Five seconds on the 45-second clock. And tipped away by Greg Jones. The long bomb to Jerry Thomas, who goes up. And with a big exclamation point, gives Bradley a 33-21 lead. Five minutes on the clock. Crowd is quiet here at the Horton Field House, and understandably so. This is Manuel, three on two to Thomas. And the foul on Jeff Harris, it looks like the bucket will count. Well, they're doing a great job of getting out on the break. As you said, it was a three on two. Illinois State getting up, being a little slow getting back. Thomas right there out running. Matt Taphorn just not getting over quite in time to uh, get the charge. It looked right there that uh, the official said that the basket may not count. I'm not uh, certain on that. We'll see here as he comes to the line. No, the basket was good. Basket Thomas still had one free throw shot. So Jerry looking for a three-point play. He's had his troubles from the free throw line, and he misses again, shooting only 31%, but the offensive rebound by Greg Jones. A new 45 seconds up on the shot clock. 440 to play in the game. Hawkins inside, double clutches, and hits a super, super shot. 37-21, Bradley. Well, Bradley looks very sure of themselves on the offensive end. The Illinois State, on the other hand, looking a bit tentative, not really running with the type of continuity that they would need to. There's the first field goal by Derek Sanders. It's 37-23, 4-17 to play. If Illinois State's going to get themselves back into this game, it, it's mostly, mostly going to be the responsibility of Derek Sanders to get that jump shot going again. As a senior, he's going to have to pick the rest of these guys up. Sanders, one out of eight. Tonight. This is Harris going one-on-one -on -one with Manuel. The ball tipped out of bounds. The Redbirds will keep keep the ball. I'm not really sure that that's what Illinois State needs right now. That time, Jeff certainly outmatched from a quickness standpoint with Anthony Manuel. But fortunately for the Redbirds, they come up with the ball. Look, Peterson up top over to Todd Starks. This is Harris. He's going to shoot it if he can from three-point range. Todd Starks misses the long one inside. The Redbirds try to get it, and they do. Sanders goes up. And this time, that was Cliff Peterson. They called an offensive foul. Well, once again, Illinois State had two players with their hands up. We'll see it. We just catch the end of it right there. Tony and Derek both went after the ball, and Cliff Peterson jumping back into the play. Mordini, very smart play. Bruce Mordini has had a bad back, he's had sore knees, and after that, he was knocked to the floor, he's walking down and limping a bit. Well, for Illinois State, you'll see Peterson go to the bench with his third personal foul, so foul starting to take their toll on Illinois State as well. Matt Taphorn back in now, Anthony Manuel running the show and doing a fine job. Jerry Thomas with a line drive shot, no good. And another foul, this time called on Hersey Hawkins. Well, I think Matt was very fortunate that time that a foul was called because he tracked the ball down well. And what I mean by that is he went after the ball as it came off the boards. Here you'll see Thomas with his jump shot. A good screen by Jones there to open that up. But Matt coming up with it, not really holding on to it. Didn't get a good grab on it. And then Hawkins come by, came by and swiped at the ball and picked up his first foul. Matt Taphorn shooting 67% for, percent from the free throw line. And he misses that one. The Redbirds continue to struggle from the line. They're down by 14, 320 on the clock. Manuel has gone the whole way for Stan Albeck tonight. And he drives all the way in. Throws one up. It goes in, and Bradley leads 39-23. Three minutes to play. Starks on the drive. Back and forth we go. It's 39-26. This tempo certainly favors Bradley. 
Right now, if you see uh, manual driving, Illinois State's going to have to come over and stop that drive either by picking up a charge or making him pick up his dribble. That time, the lob goes off the backboard, and the Redbirds come down. Jeff Harris will throw it up. This time, he passes inside. Todd Stark scores again. I think you see the difference right there in how the breaks were won. That time, Illinois State, three on one. Not as smooth as Bradley, but then again, Bradley does it so much that you would expect that from a Bradley basketball team. Well, right now, the Braves lead 39-31. There's two and a half minutes to play in the first half, and Mark, you have to be impressed with Anthony Manuel, a young man who was not scheduled to start. He got the surprise start tonight, and he's played the whole way and done a fine job up top. I would certainly think that he is one of the most important keys. If you may look for something special, they huddled as they came out, and Bradley has a tendency to do that after a timeout to set something up. In this case, that's not the case as they get back into their regular offense. Matt Taphorn guarding Mordini very close. He's a big man, but shoots the three-point shot. Greg Jones has played all the way for Bradley tonight. Hawkins with a nice move blocked by Gerard Coleman. And a new 45 seconds for the Braves. Here's Hawkins with a miss. Jones with a tip. And it's a 41-27 advantage. Two minutes to play. Jeff Harris from three-point range. An 11-point Bradley lead. say this tempo favors the Braves right now. No hesitation on either team. They're putting it up. This is Manuel looking for the pick from Mordini who pops it up. And a foul called on Hershey Hawkins. Well, Coleman, since he came in for uh, Tony Hollifield, has done a good job. Last time down the floor, he gets a nice block. Here, he's going to stay with the ball, or rather, where I think we're going to see the, uh, yeah, there you go, right there, Gerard, up around the basket, right where he needs to be. So Coleman, a freshman just like Jackson, doing some good things. That's the second foul on Hersey Hawkins. The Braves now have 14 team fouls. Gerard Coleman at the line. And the Redbirds have not hit a free throw in about 12 minutes, and they've shot a lot of them. Into the game for Bradley is Paul Wilson, who has been playing very well as of late. Try to get him some action before the intermission. Wilson checks in, replacing Bruce Mordini. He can shoot from three-point range. Jerry Thomas fighting inside with Gerard Coleman. The Braves shooting 58% from the field. The Redbirds only 38%. 10 seconds on the shot clock. And Jerry Thomas follows with the slam dunk. No basket. They're going to call Thomas for the foul. Coming over the top of Todd Stark. I'm not no, I rather I think the foul is going to be on Hersey Hawkins right here. The official underneath catching Hawkins with a little push. We'll see here a nice pass by Thomas into the post. And Jones goes up strong. But Hawkins right underneath, right there, you see his left arm on Todd Stark. Excellent call for the official to weave that out among all those bodies. Illinois State, though, back at the line. Let's hope that they can get back into the right column from Illinois State's perspective, getting those balls in the basket. That's three fouls on Hersey Hawkins. I thought it was on Jerry Thomas, but they called it on Hawkins. 55 seconds to play. Illinois State has cut the lead to 10. Matt Tapporn, two out of two. It's a nine-point game. The fans here are certainly appreciating the fact that Illinois State hit two free throws in a row. The Redbirds, five out of 16 from the free throw line tonight. Not very good. And a foul called on Derek Sanders. Derek was upset with that call. Well, he did exactly what he had to do in that situation. He got over and got himself in a position to take the charge, Emmanuel. Manuel is really causing some problems for Illinois State. He's getting a good angle toward the basket right here. Possesses much more quickness than Harris goes by him. Sarah's come, or rather, uh, Sanders coming over to try to help out his teammate, and he picked up his third foul. There are just so many whistles tonight, it's driving me crazy. The referees, I think there comes a, comes a time when they ought to let them, let them play a little bit. Manuel will shoot two. This is that one. The Braves now 8 out of 14 from the free throw line. 
Emmanuel is a good free throw shooter, though, so it's, it's surprising to see him miss at the line. He has hit 10 of 12 in the Missouri Valley this year. Anthony's gone the whole way in the first half for Bradley. And he's 0 for 2 on that sequence. 8 out of 15 now for the Braves. Neither team tearing it up at the free throw line. 41-32 Bradley, 35 seconds to play. Crucial here for Illinois State to get a nice shot at the basket as the half winds down to get themselves within 7 points. Lynn Bertolini now in, checked in for Hersey Hawkins. Hawkins with three fouls. Just like Trevor Trimpey and Luke Jackson, the Braves in a bit of foul trouble. 14 seconds on the clock. Hollifield with a miss. Jerry Thomas, another rebound. He's doing a good job tonight. Seven seconds, five seconds. Bertolini with a bomb, a two-point bomb. And time will run out. As Bradley takes a 43-32 lead here at halftime. And we'll be back in just a moment. It's new, it's unbelievable, and like nothing ever conceived before, it's from Apple, and waiting for you at CBS. Tony Hollifield. And a quick whistle. Nine seconds into the first half, Cliff Peterson gets whistled for another foul. And off to the side here, I see Todd Starks talking with Jim Bain. You see Todd leaving the official over there trying to point out that, that Hersey was using his elbow as he made the drive there. I'm not quite sure how closely the official was listening. But again, this half starting out where it took off the first half back at the free throw line. Hersey misses the first shot. Both teams are having their troubles from the free throw line. Cliff Peterson, by the way, has four personal fouls. Tony Hollifield sitting on the bench has two. And Hersey is one out of two, and it's 44-32. The Redbirds taking their time. This is Todd Starks out front looking for somebody open, and not many people are open. The Braves playing a tough man-to-man -to -man defense for Peterson. Starks open for his jumper. Overshoots it. Derek Sanders again misses another one. A nice tip by Gerard Coleman. Well, that time Illinois State fortunate to come up with the rebound initially from Derek Sanders, and then they had two people up around the board in uh, Cliff Peterson and Gerard Coleman. Gerard Coleman, a good leaper. We saw that in the Drake game we did a week ago. Tipped a nice shot in. Oh, there's a pretty one. A nice pass from Manuel to Hersey Hawkins, 46-34. And coming down the floor, Manuel goes over to Luke Jackson, who actually set up that play by setting a back screen and freeing up Hawkins for the lob. Hersey had nine points in the first half, now has 11. He's averaging 26 a game. Coleman gets blocked inside, but they call a foul on Luke Jackson, and Luke now has four personal fouls. And I think what you see right there with, with Gerard Coleman being in the game is you see him right here really posting up well inside, getting good position on Jackson and taking the ball right at him, picking up the foul. Both teams in a bit of foul trouble, and we're going to see just how good their benches are tonight because a lot of folks are going to get a chance to play if the referees continue this surge of whistles. And there's it looks like they probably will with 18.46 to play. Well, Illinois State so far in the Valley hasn't played a lot of people consistently. All five starters have been averaging over 30 minutes of ball game. However, in the preseason, a lot of people got a chance to see some action, and we're hoping that, from Illinois State standpoint, that that, that experience helps out tonight. Gerard Coleman, one out of two there. The Redbirds are now six out of 18 from the free throw line. 18-30 to play, 46-35. Bradley and the Braves will maintain possession. Manuel in the first half played a, a superb half, shooting three of three and came up with three assists. Anthony with seven points in that first half, and there's the drive inside. And guess what happened? A foul on Gerard Coleman. Well, Manuel took advantage of the lane directly to the basket, and Coleman, instead of trying to block the shot after the ball left the hand, came down on the arms of Manuel. And when you do that, you're going to get called for a foul. Already three fouls whistled here in the first minute and a half of the second half. Two on Illinois State, one on Bradley. And Anthony hits the first one. 
The Braves were 8 out of 15 in the first half. That makes them 9 out of 16. Anthony, 2 out of 2. It's 48-35. Cliff Peterson wide open, a mismatch there, Manuel on Cliff Peterson. Well, I think Jeff Harris that time, they were so concerned with him coming out on the floor that they forgot all about Cliff Peterson. Luke Jackson playing with four fouls, 18 minutes on the clock. Bradley by 11, Hawkins with a miss. And Cliffy goes back inside to Luke who misses that one. A wild exchange and the Redbirds come out with it. State showing that it can run too. Here, Todd has done a great job all year of handling the ball right here. He almost could have been called for double dribble. Good position though by Manuel to pick up the foul, but Todd almost just shot similar to Manuel in the first half. Kind of that, that little hook shot to get the ball in the bucket. Now that bucket counted. It's 48-39 and Starks picks up his third foul. If you don't have a couple of fouls in this one, you just aren't involved in the action. against Harris. Again, Manuel with the open jumper. This time he misses. Hit a couple of those in the first half. Starks doing a good job of running the show, and Derek continues to have his problems. Derek Sanders now one out of nine from the field tonight. Hawkins from three-point range. No good. Anthony goes into the stands. Manuel all over the place. Is not taking a rest tonight. You spoke of Derek having his troubles. The last 22 straight regular season games, Derek has been in double figures, and that streak tonight is on the line as he has only has, or rather, he has only four points so far. He's had the open shots, just has not been able to put them down. The senior playing at home, taking on arch rival Bradley. Harris with a miss. Cliff Peterson gets whistled for a foul. His fifth foul. Cliff Peterson fouls out with 16.55 on the clock. I think in a situation like that, Cliff has to be a little smarter and realize that he's got four and he can't pick up a foul like that, especially with the way the game has been called. If you're going to go after it and swipe at the ball, as Cliff does coming up in a moment, you're more than likely you're going to get called for the foul. Jeff that time throwing up an off-balance shot. Coleman again tracking the ball down, but it comes over to Jones, and Cliff picks up his fifth first one. Cliff leaves, leaves with seven points. That's going to hurt the Redbirds. He's a good passer and an excellent defensive player. Hawkins with a miss. Taphorn the rebound. And Matt will bring it up. The junior from Pekin in the game. Ricky Jackson comes in for Cliff Peterson. Derek misses again. He's now one out of ten tonight. Gerard Coleman. Ricky Jackson, the two freshmen in for the Redbirds. A miss by Greg Jones. Things have gotten a bit ragged. Bradley maintaining a 48-39 lead. 16 minutes on the clock. Inside to Gerard Coleman. Mordini, who's in the ballgame for Bradley, comes up with a loose ball, and the Redbirds will get possession. Todd's doing an excellent job this half of looking inside and finding the open man. A little bit earlier, we saw him throw the ball into Peterson for the easy layup. That time, Coleman flashed across the lane and was open. Coleman just couldn't come up with the passes. It might have been just a, a bit too hard. So Todd Stark sits down. Ricky Jackson, Derek Sanders, Gerard Coleman, Matt Taphorn, Jeff Harris in. Derek is now one out of 11 from the field. And Derek gets whistled for a foul, his fourth personal foul. Well, here you'll see uh, Derek go up with a shot. I'm not so certain if uh, Mordini doesn't lose his balance here. He came down, I think, on Derek's foot and lost his balance. An official in that situation has no choice but to call the foul on Sanders. A frustrating game for the fans to watch, but boy, for the players and the coaches, constant whistles being blown. 16 minutes to play. Tony Hollifield checked in for Derek Sanders, and Hollifield didn't start the second half, so let's see if that if uh, how that affects his play in the second half. There's Trippy passed up the three-pointer inside to Greg Jones. And Jones all 
offered a shot, but uh, managed to get it in there. It's 50-39, 15-30 to play. Jeff Harris on the drive. Up pretty drive. 50-41. Jackson passes out to Manuel, who gets the open lane, and he gets fouled. Ricky Jackson this time with the body. Again that time, Illinois State opting to go for the block. Instead of coming over right there, Manuel sees the floor very well. And if uh, Tony Hollifield holds his position there, I think Manuel might have picked up the foul. But instead, Jackson comes over and uh, really uh, put the clamps on Manuel as he went for the shot. That was Jackson's first foul. Bradley will be in the bonus on their next foul. Already 16 fouls on the Redbirds, and Manuel is 3 out of 3 this half. The Braves now 10 out of 17 from the free throw line tonight. Manuel looking for his fourth straight free throw in his 11th point of the game, and he gets it. Bradley now leads 52-41 with 15 minutes to play. Redbirds looking for the good shot. This is Jackson, the freshman, over to Harris. He's being guarded very close by Manuel. They know this man can pump him in from three-point range. As you see, a nice shot there by Harris. 52-43, that was not a three-point play. I thought it was, but the referee said he was just in front of the three-point line. 14 and a half minutes on the clock now. Braves looking to get Hawkins open. They're clearing out. There's Trippy setting a pick on Ricky Jackson. And Hawkins inside. This time goes to Greg Jones, who misses the shot. The Redbirds get the rebound. Matt Tapporn has done a very fine job since coming in here in the second half of getting some rebounds. I believe that's his third one since he checked in just a little while ago. Bradley's always looking to get Hersey an open shot. You can't blame him. He's a good one. Preseason All-American. See Coach Donald on a bench talking to the official, telling him to get Manuel's hands off of Harris. There's Ricky Jackson with a jump shot. No good. Mordini gets the rebound. The Braves running up the floor. There's Jones with a quick drive. A big guy who doesn't look that quick, but he is quick. It's 54-43, 13-30. Illinois, Illinois State that back clock. Not getting back on defense as quick as they, as they could. Uh, not as fast as it's been throughout the course of the game, and Bradley took advantage of it. Greg Jones has nine points. Jeff Harris looking to get open from three-point land. And the loose ball, Mordini comes up with another rebound. Playing a good game for Bradley tonight. Anthony Manuel has not taken a rest. Playing his best game of the season, no doubt about it. Mordini open, misses that one. And Hawkins fights and gets the ball. This time they call traveling on Greg Jones. Well, that time Hawkins just outworked the Illinois State players to track that ball down. I think that's a, a, a test of the fact that Hawkins isn't a one-dimensional player. He just doesn't put the ball in the hole for you. He does many, many other things out on the floor. We're going to take a break now. 12.47 on the clock, and Bradley still leading Illinois State 54-43. We'll be back. We're five-point underdogs, according to the odds makers, who make those odds in these games. And right now, Bradley is making a few people who put their money on Illinois State weep a little bit as they leave 54-43, 12 and a half minutes to play. Bradley's done a very good job of pushing Illinois State out. Illinois State having a difficult time of punching that ball in. There's the steal by Hawkins, no foul. Yes, finally the whistle blew. That's what that defense will do to you. You know, you play it long enough, the, the offense will eventually turn the ball over as they did right there. Hawkins getting out in the passing lane, getting in front of Harris, and you'll see Matt come over and fight for the ball and pick up his first personal foul. 
The Braves are now in the bonus. Hawkins goes to the foul free throw line, averaging 81%. Ricky Jackson now checks in for Matt Taphorn. So for the Redbirds, it's Derek Sanders, Tony Hollifield, Todd Starks, Ricky Jackson, and Jeff Harris. And there's the miss by Hersey. Bradley now 10 out of 18 from the free throw line. Traveling violation called on Tony Hollifield will bring it back Bradley's way. Well, Bradley has done an excellent job of not only shutting down Derek Sanders, but Tony Hollifield as well. And those are the two players for Illinois State that you really look for to, to establish an inside scoring game. There you saw the two guards for Bradley, Anthony Manuel and Hersey Hawkins. They have not taken a rest tonight. Actually, Hawkins did rest for the final 30 seconds of the first half, but they've been the marathon man. There's Manuel with a wide open jumper. Illinois State gambling a little bit and trying to trap in the corner, and that left Manuel open on the perimeter. It's a 13-point Bradley advantage. Anthony Manuel, of course, in Stan Albeck's doghouse a few weeks ago. There's a miss by Jeff Harris. Derek Sanders with an offensive rebound, and that's the Derek Sanders that the folks here in Normal have grown to love over the last few years. And it's, it's good from Illinois State that he came in after being on the bench for a little bit to come back strong. Good pass inside. Anthony Manuel, Greg Jones called for the travel. As we were saying, Anthony Manuel in Stan Albeck's doghouse a while back, as you see the nice pass from Anthony. Really nice pass inside. The official that time catching the travel before the foul. He weren't really certain which way the foul was going to go there. But uh, nevertheless, Bradley commits a turnover. Anthony was in the doghouse for being overweight. Stan Albeck made several jokes about... Anthony in the refrigerator, William Perry eating at the same place, but uh, Anthony took it the right way, went out, lost the weight, and now he's playing great, showing that quickness that uh, he showed off last season. And uh, I think those pounds that he's lost is really helping him out tonight follow Jeff Harris around. Jeff having a very difficult time getting open. Here's a foul on Paul Wilson, who has just checked in for Percy Hawkins. Paul trying for the steal, gets whistled for the foul. You can see Todd get caught a little. Jeff usually will take that shot, but I think he saw Wilson coming to fly at him, and it's difficult if you're a small guard like Jeff Harris is to shoot over somebody with the size of Wilson. With the size of Wilson. So Jeff making a smart play by trying to bypass that shot so it wouldn't get blocked. You saw Greg Jones on the bench. Jerry Thomas has replaced him. So Manuel continues to be the marathon man, the only one who's played all the way for Bradley as Derek Sanders hits his second straight shot. It's 56-47. And you can see Illinois State looking for him. Todd looked over at Jeff. Jeff had the shot, but instead of passing, he wanted to take one more look inside to see what Sanders was doing. And there's a foul whistled on Trevor Trippie, setting the pit for Anthony Manuel up top. And then Bradley right now really has to be cautious and not letting that momentum turn to Illinois State side. Illinois State getting their way back into the ball game here, only being down by nine. So Bradley still wants to keep the pressure on him, not let Illinois State get too close. And more importantly, don't let this crowd get involved in the game. Four fouls now on Trevor Trippy. Luke Jackson already on the bench with four fouls. Tony Hollowfield. You feel the momentum shifting just a bit here. Bradley's lead has window to just seven with ten minutes on the clock. Decision here by Stan Elbeck whether or not to call a timeout. Ooh, looks like he made the decision well. He stayed with him and Mordini comes with a big, big jump shot. That quiets the crowd. 58-49. Sanders has hit his last two shots down the court. This is Ricky Jackson, the freshman. You can hear the folks here at Horton jumping up every time somebody for ISU does it. Oh, yes! That's an NBA maneuver there. Paul Wilson, an outstanding offensive player, shows off his stuff. Even the folks here who are ISU fans had to appreciate that one. Derek, now three for three after coming off the bench. This is a wild offensive show in the last couple of minutes. Well, we're matching baskets right here. Somebody to figure out who's going to end up winning this game is going to have to take control and stop the other opponent. Stan Hallback has made reference many times this year to the hate
intense game, slow pace where you have to take no does. And uh, there's Thomas inside. No basket, and they call the offensive foul on Gary Thomas. Well, Illinois State that time, very smart. We talked a little bit earlier about instead of going for the block, picking up the charge. That time, Tony tried to take a charge, and Derek comes over as well. Two, two times in that sequence, Illinois State did what they needed to do. You can hear the folks. Bradley leads 60 to 53, nine minutes. Rose from Phi Kappa side for that nice sign. And of course, it's a sellout over 7,700. Bradley only purchased 138 tickets. So uh, the majority of Illinois State fans are getting excited as the Redbirds have climbed back into it. Now down by only seven with nine minutes to play. Important that they continue to look for some good shots inside. Derek working very hard right now to get open. But Illinois State doesn't want to rush it. On the other hand, Bradley likes to force a turnover here and get a quick bucket to kind of slow down the momentum Illinois State has gained. The Braves playing tough man-to-man -to -man defense. This Missouri Valley has become the man-to-man -man conference, no doubt about it. Jeff Harris with the miss. Tapped out by Jerry Thomas, the new 45 on the shot clock for Illinois State. 8.30 in the game. Derek has hit his last three in a row and misses that one. And a foul on Jerry Thomas as Derek was going up. I can't say enough about Derek Sanders this past seven minutes or so, ever since he's come in off the bench. As a senior and as a leader, Coach Donowell has really been pleased with Derek. And here you'll see him really fight for position. He knew he was going to go up with the shot. Nice turnaround jump shot there. But Thomas got caught touching the hand which stopped Derek from following through on the shot. Derek was one out of 11. He's now three out of 15 from the field, and he hits that foul shot. He has was two out of two, now three out of three from the line. Well, before that shot, Illinois State was six of 18, only 33%. So to stay in this game, we're going to or Illinois State's going to have to hit their free throw. All right, it's 60-55. Bradley leads 8.20 to play. This is the closest it's been since the 8-11 mark of the first half. Bradley maintains control. Anthony comes back out to set it up. Bradley sets those picks up top. Mercy Hawkins has been quiet. And a foul inside on Tony Hollifield, leaning on Bruce Mordini. Three fouls on Tony Hollifield. Well, I think it's going to be the Illinois State's advantage is that they can slow down Bradley here. I think what Bradley would like to do is get that running game going again, get those points on the board in a hurry. And right now, Illinois State is forcing them to set up. Unfortunately, from Illinois State's standpoint, they commit a foul here and put Mordini, who is an excellent free throw shooter, at the line. Bruce was four out of four in the first half, and he's now four out of five, and he fights for the ball. And Hawkins picks it up. Inside to Bruce, who lays it in. Oh, this is the easy layup. And another whistle blown, this time on Tony Hollifield. He now has four personal fouls. That's imperative for Illinois State to come up with those loose balls right there. They've had, they've had a couple opportunities to come up with it, as we're going to see it here. Manuel, again, excellent job of passing. Mordini, just a bit off balance. He couldn't get the ball in the basket. You see Todd Starks, Tony Hollifield, Derek Sanders, all getting their hands on the ball. Mordini now four out of six, missed his last two. Bradley holding on to a five-point lead, 7.45 to play. Todd Starks brings it up for Illinois State. Derek forces the shot, no good, and a foul called on Bruce Mordini inside. Down and getting good position to go after the ball. Illinois State, though, it seems like they're standing around a bit too much on the perimeter. I know Coach Donowell doesn't like that in something like this. You still need that good movement. Right now, maybe the perimeter people are looking too much for Sanders or for Hollifield inside, and they can't afford to do that. If they do, it plays to the advantage of Bradley because it's much easier to defense against a team that's standing around, posting up a lot. Greg Jones checks in for Paul Wilson. So Bradley has Bruce Mordini, Greg Jones, and Jerry Thomas, Hershey Hawkins, Anthony Emanuel out front. Ricky Jackson and Todd Starks are the guards for Illinois State. Gerard Coleman, Derek Sanders, 
down low. Jeff Harris also in the game for Illinois State. There's Jackson looking for a second straight jumper. No good. Jones gets the rebound. 7 minutes to play. Bradley ahead 60-55. Hawkins misses that one, starts with the rebound. Boy, what, what can you say about a person that comes down and misses the big jump shot, next sequence comes over and pulls his team within three points. That was Ricky Jackson, the freshman. Stan Allback has called a timeout. The lead is down to three. in the nation. That's because it's well such a small building and so many people in here and boy the sound just echoes and bounces off the walls and it's hard to hear. Makes for an exciting show though. Riley leads by three. Six and a half minutes to play. Mordini misses the loose ball. Mordini gets it back. And they're going to whistle a foul inside. Ricky Jackson, I believe, for reaching in. Once again, we go back to hanging on to the ball, coming up with a loose ball. That time, Gerard Coleman had the ball in his hand. Nice job of tracking it down. But Bradley, you've got to give them a lot of credit because they're they're really scrapping inside, slapping at the ball, and causing the ball to be turned over. Okay, that foul is on Todd Starks instead of Ricky Jackson, and the point man for Illinois State now has four fouls. Bruce Mordini is now 0 for his last three free throw attempts. He was four out of four in the first half. There you go, Bruce. He takes a deep sigh of relief as Bradley has a four-point lead. Whoa! <laughs> I think everybody in the arena but the official saw Jones hang on to Derek Sanders' arms as Derek posted. Derek looking at the official right in the eyes right now, looking to get that call. But if you get away with it, I think we're going to see it right there. You see Jones' left arm grab Sanders' left arm. And uh, no call is called. If you get away with it, it's a great defensive play. Okay, they call Jerry Thomas for the foul there on the rebound. Actually, they didn't. Jerry got the rebound and was fouled, I should say. He goes to the free throw line. A wild exchange. Luke Jackson finally checks back in. He has four fouls. He'll check in for Bruce Mordini. Coach Albeck giving Mordini a hand. I think he certainly appreciates how, how much hard work Mordini has put out on the floor tonight. There's been so many whistles tonight, it's easy to get confused. And Jerry misses again. He's had his troubles at the free throw line this season. Well, it seems like it's going to come down to who can hit their free throws here for as the game winds down. Six minutes on the clock. Ono State misses. Greg Jones. Uh, nice rebound, and he makes a bad pass. Anthony Manuel was not looking for the ball. Ono State can cut the lead to two now. You see Manuel guarding Harris. Can't say enough about the job that he's done on Jeff today. Doing a good job of keeping the ball out of Jeff's hands. Gerard Coleman inside. Gets batted out of bounds. Illinois State will maintain possession. This has been a game of spurts. Seems like in a couple of minutes, both teams will be scoring at will. Then all of a sudden, it gets sl slowed down. A lot of fouls are whistled. It's really been a choppy game. The referees have had a lot to do with that. Not a fluid game whatsoever. It's not fluid, but as it's turning out with Bradley holding a four-point lead, it's going to wind up a pretty exciting game to see who ends up pulling this one out. Inside to Tony Hollifield, and Jerry Thomas gets called for the half. Thomas talking with Luke Jackson, a freshman there, looking for some help from Luke as Tony cut toward the basket. Jackson really uh, wasn't guarding anybody in that sequence, and what he's got to do is look to see if there's an opening and come over and help out his fellow teammate. That's four fouls now on Jerry Thomas. Donawald was looking at, uh, Coach Donawald was looking at Todd Starks there, informing him or reminding him that Todd has four fouls and that he's got to be very careful in the, in the final 523 not to pick up his fifth. 
Derek Sanders has four fouls. Todd Starks has four. Jerry Thomas has four fouls. So does Luke Jackson. All sorts of folks out there in danger of fouling out. Tony continues to have his troubles, and Derek gets the rebound blocked by Jackson. And it's a four-on-one, and Thomas puts the big exclamation point on it. It's 63-57. Todd gambled there and came up to try to get the ball, and if you don't come up with it, you really put the defense in the bind, and that time the only defense for Illinois State was Jeff Harris. If I'm not mistaken, Tony Hollifield is now 0 for his last 16 from the foul line. And there's Hollifield inside. 63-59, 440 on the clock. The Braves looking to set up a play for Hawkins, setting the double pick on that side, and Manuel gets the open lane. Another tip in by Jerry Thomas, who's come alive here in the last couple of minutes. Well, Bradley that time did something very smart. They saw Harris on Manuel out on top, and they kind of spread it out, let Manuel work for that shot, and he took the opening. The Braves getting some valuable minutes from Jerry Thomas, who has come off the bench and scored 10 points tonight. There's Derek with another miss, having a terrible night from the field, and Bradley gets another rebound. They lead 65-59, four minutes now to play. I think what you're seeing right here is, again, Bradley's going to spread it out. It's a low of four people down, then you see Hawkins work one-on-one -on -one against Illinois State. There's the block by Hollowfield inside. The loose ball picked up by Ricky Jackson. Good job that time. Illinois State helped out well on the one-on-one -on -one move by Hawkins. Todd Starks has four fouls. Ricky Jackson to Jeff Harris and Bob Donawald calls a timeout. The Redbirds trail by six. 340 to play. We'll be back. Point game. Be interesting to see if Bradley goes back to that same offense. So apparently, though, Tony Hollifield injured himself on that last play down underneath the basket, and the official calls for an injury timeout. I think what we have here, Mark, is another problem with Tony's contact. At Drake a week ago, he had the same problem. He looks like he, whatever was in his eye has gotten it out of there. Has a lot of problems with his contacts, and last week I suggested he should get the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar goggles, but uh, you told me that's not his style. I still <laughs> think he should do it. 318 on the clock. Bradley by four. The Braves are spreading it out, letting Hawkins go one-on-one. -on -one. And that time he takes advantage. It's a six-point lead. That's Hawkins at his best right there. Not a whole lot more Todd starts to do. He is up close to him, put some good pressure on the shot, but Hawkins is showing the great player that he is. Puts Bradley back up by six. I think Hawkins is showing a lot on the defensive end tonight as well. A super game on his part. And Manuel gets poked in the eye, no whistle, and another entry timeout. Coach Donawald taking this opportunity to talk to Matt Taphorn about the last sequence of events. Try to get things turned around for his team, get him back into this game as time is winding down. Stan Hallback was hoping to come over and see how Anthony Manuel was. The referee stopped him and told him he couldn't walk over there. Taking him back to the bench, Anthony seems to be okay. He has not taken a break this whole game. He started tonight playing the best game of his career of Bradley. No question, he's only a sophomore. Hawkins bringing it, bringing it up. Percy has 14 tonight. He's averaging 26. They're clearing it out again. This time a partial block by Ricky Jackson. Boy, Tony Hollifield. Tony doing a great job on the offensive board, keeping Illinois State within striking distance. 14 points for Hollifield. 67-63 Bradley, 2.15 on the clock. There's Hawkins, they're setting a double pick, a steal by Stark, and a foul on Manuel. Todd coming on the store, uh, down the floor rather, is pretty disappointed that Manuel found him. Illinois State would have had a three on zero break. So Manuel, even though losing the ball on the 
offensive end really does a smart thing by committing the foul and putting Illinois State at the line where they have not been good, only making 8 of 22, 36%. That was Anthony Manuel's second personal foul. Bradley now has 24 as a team in this game. Illinois State has 23. 47 fouls have been called tonight. Well, the Redbirds just cannot shoot the free ones. Hollifield with another rebound, having a good game in that department. And the Redbirds looking to cut it to two. A slap inside by Anthony Manuel, who now has three personal fouls. If this game goes into overtime, there's going to be a little strategy going on because there'll be all sorts of guys fouling out. And you know, you talk to uh, the athletic directors at halftime and cutting the scholarships down. You know, if you get in a game where there's a lot of fouls, you have a few injuries, that really puts a team in a bind. You get down on the bench where you may only have one or two players available. Stark shooting the one and one, misses again. The Redbirds have been atrocious from the free throw line, and the crowd is letting them know. 67-63, minute 45 to play. Manuel on the drive, and the foul out front on Todd Starks. Starks fouls out of the ball game, I believe. That's five. He's gone. And that's going to really hurt Illinois State from two ways. And he handles the ball so well offensively, but then defensively as well. He's very quick. He's one of the quickest players on the team, one of the best defensive players. So Bradley really here in a nice spot, seeing that Todd Starks, Illinois State's ball handler, leaving the game. Starks joins Cliff Peterson on the bench. Both players have fouled out. Peterson left with 16 minutes to play in the half. And Jeff Harris will replace Todd Starks. With Harris coming in, though, as the game's winding down, you got your three-point shooter in there. So Illinois State might start, might, may have to go to that three-point shot to stay, uh, to stay close here. Anthony Manuel, five out of five this half. He's the only guy on the court who's been able to shoot free throws. Trying to make it a six-point lead. He does. He's the MVP for Bradley tonight, no doubt about it. It's 69-63, a minute 45 to play. This is Ricky Jackson, the freshman. will take control and Randy Blair the freshman from Richwoods will be checking in for Jeff, Jeff Harris yeah, Jeff taking a seat right there got to come up with the ball in that situation you're the guy that's going to bring the team back and uh, you need that three point shot right now and Illinois State though did look for it but Bradley now certainly going to try maybe to run a little bit of time off the clock here Riley always looks to set that pick up at the top of the free throw circle. You see Mordini easing in there. He'll stay up close. If they can, they'll clear out for Hawkins, but they want to work that time down. A minute 15 on the game clock. 18 on the shot clock. Inside to Greg Jones. And a foul on Derek Sanders. And Sanders is gone, I believe. Derek Sanders is now fouled out. He joins Cliff Peterson and Jeff Harris on the bench. Jones and Sanders exchanged words there. Nothing came of it. The referee stepped in the middle of it. Well, I think Derek didn't like what Jones did there. Derek was leaving the floor. Jones is waving goodbye. And I think Derek may have mentioned something about sportsmanship as he passed Jones. Derek had a tough night tonight from the field. He had three field goals. He was four out of four from the line. I believe his streak of double-figure games will continue, though. He leaves with 10 points. Taphorn brings it up, 69-63. A minute five and counting. There's Gerard Coleman making it a 69-65 game. Have to cause some pressure right here and come up with a steal or there in the bonus so you go for the ball like Jeff does right there and put him at the line. However, Manuel has shot well. You may, might not want to follow him in this situation. Follow up 23, Jeff Harris. Illinois State coming into this game, as we've said all night long, riding a three-game winning streak. They are right behind Tulsa in the Valley at 3-1. Tulsa is 3-0. 
You know, I think Illinois State is going to have to foul here as the game winds down. And, and on the floor, you see Jerry Thomas, who is shooting very poorly from the floor. So Illinois State, maybe that's what Coach Donowell is going to talk about as he goes in the huddle is who exactly they need to foul. Bradley 1-1 one one in the Valley. They have not won a road game all year. Tonight, they lead by four with 51 seconds to play. He would get it. No problem at all. The fans waving in front of him there in the end zone here at the Horton Field House. But Manuel calmly steps up, hands the free throw. 70-65, 51 seconds. Look for Harris to throw up some three-pointers on the way back down. Again, looking awfully impressive tonight. His best game ever on a Bradley uniform. No question about that. This is Harris looking to get open. This is that one. Goes out of bounds, and Bradley will take control. They lead by six with just 39 seconds on the clock. Player for Harris in the ISU lineup. Randy Blair checks back in for Jeff Harris. He's the freshman from Richwoods. Very quick, and Bob Donawal does this when he looks to pick up a steal in the final seconds. This is his offensive man, Blair, his defensive theft specialist. This is Manuel getting fouled by Taphorn. And that time down the floor, Thomas, I think, was hiding in the corner to our, our left, or left on your screen right there, uh, trying to stay as far away from the ball as possible. If Bradley holds on here in the final seconds, their first road win of the season. Not many people gave them a chance tonight. Of course, uh, they have a lot of talent. Basically the same team back from last year, except Jimmy Les and Mike Williams are gone. Those are two big minuses, but when you look at a Hersey Hawkins and an Anthony Manuel and a Trevor Trimpey, you have some talent out there. You know, tomorrow a lot of people are going to look at the box score and see how well Manuel scored, but what the box score won't say is... Five, and it's going to be Bradley's toughest test probably of the season here and at Tulsa. You mentioned the 23-game home winning streak. Tulsa's got a five-game winning streak as well.